to this day with myself. That is all I focus on. On this question for you guys, does your diet suck? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of your diet as an investment strategy, a purchase. Would you ever buy a car that requires a lot of maintenance and the slightest things cause it to break down? Diets have a lot in common with cars. They are modes of transport to get us where we want, to get us what we want, be it muscle gain, improved health, or fat loss. We sign up for diets because they seem reasonable, dependable, a fair deal. So is your diet a lemon? I tweeted this the other day. Very simple. How easily does it break? Oh, you're keto? You, you can't have this. I could break your diet with this. Carnivore just stabbed you with a banana, bro. You done. Intermittent fasting. You can't have this in the morning. I'll take it. I like my bananas milfy. Six meals a day? So you have to eat every two hours. Okay, you, you can't watch that new avatar joint. The coach says you can't trade in blueberries for a milfy banana? What? I hope I made my point. The worst part about these diets is that the rules that they make people follow are not rationalized at all. And it's usually the creators of these diets, their irrational fears that dictate what good eating behavior is. So you're basically under the bed with them hiding because they think there's a monster in the closet. Truth is a good nutritional strategy doesn't have to be complicated at all, but you can figure out if your diet is giving you more busy work than results by simply learning the basics about nutrition. That's all it takes. If you don't own these books, there is a good chance you are doing a lot of busy work. Link in the description below. Simple way of separating the shit from the ice cream is to basically look at the pyramid. Does your diet prioritize these variables in that order? That simple. We went over what generally makes a bad diet a bad diet. Let's go over some things you do want to look for when committing to any sort of nutritional intervention. And it's just for them. Just for them. That's all I got. For these four things. Good diets prioritize education and make you play an active role in not just eating the food, but learning as you go. This will give you more autonomy over time. And I cannot state just how important this is. My goal with all my athletes is to eventually coach myself out of a job one day. Second one is good plans meet you where you are at right now. You are the last leg in customization. Well, for example, I haven't ran in like 10 years. If I wanted to run a marathon by year's end, I wouldn't be starting off with a load that is similar to someone who's made running their life over the last 10 years. I just don't need to do that in order to see progress. The path of least resistance infused with the basic principles is as complicated as it has to be. It will take you much further than what most bodybuilders think is true. To this day, with myself, that is all I focus on. Third feature is that they are all weather ready. They are flexible and they can thrive in almost any environment. If all it takes is a few social events, you being stranded at an airport or your finances are a little bit lower than usual this month to get you off plan or simply sell you on that way of thinking, there is a massive problem with your diet strategy. The fourth one is that you can see yourself doing this, this diet strategy for a very long time. And eventually as it evolves and you play a bigger role in customizing this plan, for the rest of your life. It's wild out there. You have people who are just trying to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds, and they legit live a dietary life that is much more complicated than anything I go through when I am trying to get ready for bodybuilding shows. Yet homegirl who just wants to be snatched for the summer is 
legitimately doing the equivalent of doing the hokey pokey before she walks through doors because she is convinced that this is what she has to do. This picture here, sometimes I ate 2,400 calories, sometimes I ate 2,800 calories, sometimes I had a lot of fruits, sometimes I didn't have a whole lot of fruits, sometimes I had a lot of veggies, sometimes I didn't, I tried, but Sometimes that's just how it worked out. Sometimes I had 190 grams of protein. Some days I had 130 grams of protein. Sometimes I ate four meals. Sometimes I ate two meals and a snack. At the end, these were all variations of the same dieting strategy I used to get me closer to my goal. All follow the very basic principles of nutrition and that's as complicated as I needed it to be. It allowed me to be consistent and that is above anything else what people need not complexity. For those of you thinking it's just his genetics and that wouldn't work for most others, that is not true. My whole career, over, over 10 years coaching now, I have used these exact same dieting principles, the core fundamentals to help a lot of people who prior to me helping them had a hard time reeling in their health, had a hard time achieving whatever their personal fitness goals were at the time. If your diet is missing any of those four core features that all good dieting strategies have, you might be investing your time, effort, and money. Groceries are expensive these days, y'all. You might be investing in a lemon or, or at best like doing the hokey poke, but most just end up accumulating these failed attempts. And most of the time, especially mentally, they end up discouraged and in a worse place than where they started. And at best, those who are staying afloat, I assure you, because I've been here every once in a while, they have to ask themselves, is, is this sustainable? See myself living this way for the rest of my life. I know I've had these thoughts. I've been there. The roads are slick. Don't get caught driving a lemon.